Um, have we used microphones in this room? Do you, okay, so I'll get us started. Martha, um, just talk about playing on Chatria today and, and I guess opening up the Roland, Roland Garros this year on that court. Um, wasn't nice to play on Sunday, have to be honest. <laughs> um, I played on Chatria two years ago against Iga and unfortunately it was empty because of curfew and COVID and it was really nice to have a crowd today and I don't know, I was just enjoying my time there, not my best match, but it's tennis. Marta, were you shocked by the, the crowd's reaction as you walked off? And how did that feel? Because it, it can't have been, been pleasant. Mm, I don't know. I want to see people react to it in 10 years when the war is over. I think this, they will not feel really nice about what they did. Okay, Neil, and then Mike, yes. Um, I'm going to check on some of the things that you continue to make your stand. I, I assume you're going to continue to do this and de decline to shake hands with play. Russian, yeah, I said that that I will not do it, and uh, I don't know why people think I'll suddenly change my mind. Thank you. Just to follow up on that, do you think you'll? I'm going to sound surprised by the reaction. Do you think you'll get a different reaction when you do this at Wimbledon, or would you like to think you'll get a different reaction? Um, I'm pretty sure I would because uh, Wimbledon banned them last year and I think uh, a lot of when I was in UK last year the people were reacting to us differently even when like I don't know on the street literally and uh, I felt a lot of support so I'm pretty sure the reaction would be different. Okay, um, I don't even know if you would know this but last last night the biggest ever drone attack was launched on your home city. I just wonder if you could talk about what it's like to have to uh, to have to sort of go out and play a big match uh, <coughs> in the knowledge that something like that has happened to what you call or where you call home, or do you just get used to it? Um, usually when I, s when I wake up during the night, I don't check my phone, but for but I check my notification, and when I see some groups that have a lot of notification throughout the night, I know, throughout the night, I know that something happened, and uh, I checked my phone tonight, last night at five in the morning and uh, I saw everything that's going on. And I mean, I just want to say that I'm proud of our air defense system and you know how they shoot uh, almost 100% of things. But yeah, it's, I don't know, it's part of my life. It's something I cannot describe probably. I try to put my emotions aside anytime I go out on court. I think I'm better than before. Um, and I don't think it affects me as much on a daily basis, but um, yeah, it's just, I don't know, there is not much to say really, it's just part of my life. Okay, James and then Rob, James? Uh, Marta, hi. hi. You won't have had a chance to see this, but Arena was next door and said something quite strong. I just wanted to read a small line from. Yep. She said, nobody in this world, Russian athletes or Belarusian athletes, support the war, nobody. How can we support the war? Nobody, normal people, will never support it. It seems like a very strong thing for a Belarusian tennis player to stand up and say. I wonder what you thought of it. Mm, well, you know, she never says that she personally doesn't support this war. And I feel like journalists should, because you guys do a lot of work on lightening things and uh, asking people their opinion on certain things. And I feel like you should change the the questions that you ask these athletes because the war is already there. It's been, I don't know, 15 months since the war had <laughs> begun. And I feel like you should ask these players who would they want the war to win? Because if you ask this question, I'm... Mm, I'm not so sure these people will say that they want Ukraine to win, you know? And this is and this is something, I don't know. This is something life-changing I think in in the world of of people because this is the biggest difference uh there is because if you ask me who you would what you want the war to win, I'd say Ukraine, of course. I don't know how it will be over, but I want Ukraine to win at the end. But about them, I'm not sure. And 
you know, she should talk for herself, I think, at fir like first of all, and then talk about all the other athletes because I know, I personally know athletes from tennis that support the war. And um, to say nobody is a little bit, <clears throat> I think it's a little bit strong <laughs> uh, because I, I think it's, you can only speak for yourself. And uh, yeah, there's, I don't know, I don't know what else to say. Marta, Wimbledon have announced they're going to give uh, two rooms to Ukrainian players when they're in the UK for the grass court season. What is your reaction to that? And does it feel like they're just sort of not paying you off, but trying to give you that guilt-free money so you don't speak out, perhaps, in this environment at SW19? Mm, I think, um, given the fact that non none of Ukrainian players can go back home, I feel like this has... This was supposed to be encouraged by all the tournaments, I guess. And uh, there were tournaments that tried to do something like this. And I and I feel like, you know, it, it should be on every tournament because I live in a different country because I have to live in a different country because I cannot go home. And um, this gives me a lot of extra expenses that I wouldn't have had if... Uh, if the war was not there, and uh, yeah, obviously, obviously it's nice and it helps, and you feel uh, you feel like people at least somehow. Try. Obviously, no one can understand what we are going through. This is, and I, it's unexplainable. Okay, and I just feel it's like it just it just makes me believe that there are good people in this world left. You know. We'll go with the block. We'll go with the block in the white. I'll get my hair cut. It, 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 it's the best. Com it's the best compliment I've had. So thank you anyway. <laughs> TV line, so it's yeah. fine. I, I'm, gl I'm glad I'm looking good. Whatever. Marta, could you just chat to us, please, about why you are competing on the tour right now? Is it just because you want to concentrate on your tennis, or? Do you also want to use it as a platform to explain what is going on in your life and in your country? Um, <clears throat> I mean, um, I play tennis because I love tennis and this is my job. I'm not going to lie. It, uh, it's paying off a lot of things in my life uh, and I cannot say that I'm bad at it. And uh, I want to, you know, there is this is something I do in life. It, if the war is there, I shouldn't stop my life because of it you know I have to do something because the moment you stop it's I think it's over and um, I, I I don't know I, I love tennis every time I go out in court no matter who's on the other side of the net I I try to to give my best I try to test myself I try to challenge myself and you know become a better person so I think this is why I do this Hi. Hi. Um, ultimately, in a war, only the leaders can continue it or call it off. Uh, but it's a war is a battle for minds and hearts. And uh, Sablanka, who's in a very difficult position, says in Indian Wells and here, I cannot stop the war. I'm sorry for her. Yeah. Um, Do you think in a way, though, that's not the issue whether she can stop the war or not stop the war, but it's whether a leader and role model chooses to speak out or in a very, very difficult situation or not to speak out? Mm, I don't know why it's a difficult situation for her. <laughs> I just, like, since the beginning of the war, all of them have very difficult situation, and I don't understand what is difficult about it, you know? <laughs> Um, she uh, might be world number one after this tournament <clears throat> and she's going to be world number one in the one of the most known sports in the world and if you uh, I don't know, if you check um, the statistics in Russia or Russia who support the war or who don't 
In Russia, there is 80% or 85% of, of people who support this war. And, um, you know, just by speaking out, I think she can just send some message because most of these people, they haven't even ever left the country. Like, you know how Russia and US are the biggest enemies ever. And there are people who never left Russia and they say, oh, Russia should destroy US, you know, they're the biggest enemies of ours. But they've never even been there. They don't even know how people live there. Like I tell you, there is a big difference how people live in US and how people live in Russia. And someone like Arina, who's traveling the world, who is, um, I don't know, she has a big platform of people who support her. I mean, I speak out about things and I see it like, you know, New York Times, um, Washington Post, you know, so many, like CNN, BBC, you know, there's so many platforms that millions, billions of people in the world read. And just to reject her responsibility of having an opinion on the most important things in the world, I cannot respect that. You know, she said that she, ha uh, that I hate her. I don't, I never said publicly nor privately, nor to anyone, that I hate Irina Sabalenka or any of the players. I just don't respect her because of her position in all of, in, all, in this situation. I just, because the hate, as I said in the interview to Ukrainian publisher yesterday, uh, hate or love, it's like, it's an emotion, okay? Like, people can love me, people can hate me, I don't care, as that's what she said, I don't care. I don't care either. But if someone doesn't respect me, Mm. then I don't feel nice, you know? Because respect is not an emotion. So I don't, I don't understand why she's in a difficult situation, honestly. I don't understand. Okay, can you talk to Harley, please? And then we'll bring Sebastian, Marty, and the other lady. Hi, Marta. When was the last time you were in Ukraine? Uh, what is your family situation like there now? And where is it that you are living now? Um, I was in Ukraine uh, end of March after Miami because uh, I had to go there to to do a lot of documentation for my um, foundation that I that I started and um, my yeah I'm currently in Monaco and my mom and my sis little sister they live close by and my dad and my grandpa uh, are in Kiev. Marta, um, what does it mean for you to win the war? Kick them out of the Ukraine, include Krim Island, or uh, it's crazy, but going to Moscow, or what <laughs> does it mean for you to win the war? Um, <clears throat> mm, I think to win the war is to um, kick them out to the borders before 2014. And uh, the most important think is to not let them back in ever again. I don't think, I don't think people have a, an idea of going all the way to the Moscow. I mean, we're, I don't think we're interested really. You know, we have to keep up with what we have, you know, not getting more and leaving behind what we have. So I think, I think there's a long way to go, but this is, I think, what we are all, all thinking. Hi, Marta. Um, first of all, just just curious if you've ever, like today, have you ever felt hostility from you know outside of the um, locker room from people, uh, you know, when when making statements or you know not sure. Have I ever felt what hostility, like you know the crowd doing today? Have you ever felt that before? Um, like a negative reaction. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, of the people or from the players? Just from pe people in from general, be, be in Ukraine and, and mm. things like that. Uh, mm. And a, a second question, sorry. Um, yeah. Also, uh, when, when about um, Russian and Belarusian athletes, uh, d when some of them may be afraid of you know speaking out um, because of their family or whatever, what 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 do you think of that? Um, I guess there are some someone like Kasatkina, for example, has been a bit clearer about her stance than um, uh, Sabalenka. Do, do you accept that, or do you still think that more should be done? I guess. Mm. I. Mm. I don't know, I feel like people support me in the different tournaments. 
uh, and I just want to, you know, to show my best and to play tennis and come people to support me playing tennis when I play tennis. And what happened today, I, I have to say, I didn't expect it. I did not, and but I, I have no reaction to it. It's, I mean, people should be honestly embarrassed, but this is not my, <laughs> my call. Um, and I don't know. I feel fine uh, on the social media. I after my statements, I have a lot of negative reactions, but I deleted most of my social, deleted almost all social media from my phone. I don't read anything. I close the comments and I don't want to, honestly, I don't, I'm full of this sh shit that people say, like they don't make, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> so I just skip that. And <clears throat> about Sabalenka and Kasatkina, well, I think Kasatkina made her statement and she's not going back to Russia and that's her choice. And that I can, I mean, I can see that, that, you know, that she really, she gave up something that's important for her to to I don't know how to say it uh, to to stay on the side of the truth and of the kindness and love I think and uh, I don't know what other players are afraid of I mean I go back to Ukraine where I can die any second from uh, drones or missiles or whatever it is and I try to go back there as much as I can I just don't have time for it really uh and what are they afraid of honestly most of the players who have been up who i mean there are a lot of players who have financial possibilities to you know even take their families away but for some reason they don't do it and i was forced to do it you know and um I just, yeah, as I said, I don't respect this. I don't know. No one ever, you know, we are individual sport and there is like f five Ukrainian girls in top 100. It's not that tough to, when the war began, to come and talk to us for a couple of minutes and to, I don't know, to uh, to say anything. But it was just a mouth shut, uh, eyes in the ground, and they walk and they don't, they don't see any. They don't say anything. So I don't understand. I mean, I see these players every single week in the locker room, and they don't have the audacity to come up and talk to me for 15 months already. I, I mean, I'm not sure if they will now. I will look okay. Like I will accept it because it's been a little bit, a lot of time already since the war began, and. Um, I I don't know, it's just, like, I don't know, I think, no matter what I say, I think it's a, it's a job of a journalist to change the questions that have been asked these players, because it's all over, like, it's, every time is the same question, and you will get always the same answer, so I think this is, you, you shouldn't ask me all these things, because, you know, they can give you answers if you, if you ask right questions. I can I can also do English. It doesn't matter okay, to me. Marta, like some weeks ago, um, all of you uh, called the heads of this uh, WTA to discuss this problem. Has it moved somewhere? Uh, when will you have other meetings? And what's on your agenda? Uh, we actually had a call right when I was in Kiev, mm, and. Uh, yeah, after the call, we figured out that there there is nothing changed, really. And everyone is just defensive, as they've been since the beginning of this whole thing. I don't know why they're so afraid of us. Uh, and um, we sent a couple of emails, uh, really rough ones, with, like, strong ones. And we got the replies that we are working on it, we want to help you in the best way we can, and nothing changed. So I don't know when it's going to be next call, and I just feel like we've tried all the possible things we could try. And uh, I just hope that, you know, I just hope, because I don't feel like there is anything left in our power to, f to do something with WTNATP directly. We just, I mean, it's impossible. 
Um, I just hope that someone like UK, for example, will just not grant visas and they will not be able to enter the country and they will not play. I think this is, as of now, I think this is the only reasonable idea because, I mean, we are a little bit, we did everything. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, but just checking. But you're, you're from Ukraine, right? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, that's why I was giving you. Yeah, okay. All right, we're good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.